So moving on, this is where things start to get a little bit more difficult and they start to get more important. This is bivariate data and it's super important that we understand that scatter plots are just the next step on in bivariate data and it's numerical, numerical. So we have numbers on both axes. You've got a Y and an X. You've got your explanatory on the X. You've got your response on the Y. So, you know, if you have things like time, it's always going to be on the explanatory, which is the horizontal and the X. Um, and then whatever it's compared with will be on the Y or the vertical. So when describing, when describing scatter plots, we go three key features. Again, there is a fourth key feature and that is context. You must always give context. So I'm going to give context first, but for here, we're just going to discuss really these three other features, which are strength, direction, and form. So first of all, let's talk about our R value. Our R value is our Pearson's correlation coefficient. It measures the strength. So step one measures strength, strength of a linear relationship. We generally assume everything is linear. There are some cases isn't, we'll get to that. So don't worry. Um, and we always find the value of R using a calculator because the formula for R is atrocious and we're not, we're never going to touch it. So please don't worry about the formula for R. As you can see here, we have a nice little table here that I would recommend having something like this in your data booklet, um, in your summary book. Sorry, I keep, I'm going to keep saying data booklet, I mean summary book. You need to have something like this in your summary book. Why is that? Because as you can see here, it just tells you when you describe what the number is. So if you get a number for R, you can then just go to this page and go, all right, it was positive 0 0.8, 0 0.8 falls into strong positive. It was negative 0 0.44. Negative 0 0.44 is a weak negative. Essentially, the closer the number is to negative one or one, the stronger the linear relationship is. It's got more strength. The further away from one or negative one, so the closer to zero, the weaker it is. And when it's very close to zero, we say there's no association. So there's no strength. Um, the sign in front of R gives the direction. So the R value gives us both. It gives us the first two. It gives us strength and direction. So, Looking at this, we'll just have a quick look at this one here while we're here. Having a look at this, I want everyone to, to have a quick think. For those of you not watching the premiere, watching the recording, feel free to pause and have a quick think. What do you think the R value for this would be? Well, how would you describe the R value for this? Not what the number is, how would you describe it? So take a quick think, three, two, one. I would describe this as positive. I think this has got a positive trend, but I would describe this as weak to no association. It's weak to no association. It would definitely fall somewhere in here. It would fall somewhere between, I'm going to say zero to 0 0.49. It's probably falling somewhere more between like zero point, oh, whoops. It's probably falling somewhere more between 0 0.15 to, you know, 0 0.49. Um, but I would say it's somewhere between that weak to no association. But if it was weak, it would be a weak positive because it's definitely sort of that way rather than that way. So important that you sort of can sort of decipher that by looking at it. You're never going to answer a question based off it, but it gives you sort of like, all right, I'm going to assume my R value needs to be somewhere around there. Now, if my R value ended up, I went and calculated an R value now for that data and I got an R value of like negative 0.88, I know something's going wrong because I know I shouldn't have a strong negative association. I could justify it being negative 0.2 or negative 0.1 as much as it's outside of the ranges I wrote there. I could justify it still. I could say, all right, that's not unreasonable. I might recalculate it. I'll probably find it's the same value and maybe my estimate was a little bit wrong when I go, all right, that's okay. But again, if I get a value of like negative 0.88 or like positive 0.72 or something, I know something's wrong because that graph does not look like that at all. So it's important to sort of be able to decipher it as well, looking at your sort of graph, like just having a look at it and going, all right, what's it actually look like? Like, what have I actually got? And have a look at it in that sort of form. Um, so warning, can only calculate R values for linear data sets, and we will discuss that. Then we have form. So form is whether it's um, linear, non-linear or no association. You're going to assume it's linear unless it looks really bad um, or unless your R value is no association. Um, so linear data follows a relatively straight line, non-linear has a curve and then no association is where the data points are randomly spread um, and do not appear to be associated. <coughs> Pardon me. 
Um, and then here's a really good table, I'm not going to go through this, about how to interpret our values as well. So obviously we discussed this, but then this is where you can sort of describe it. Um, and you sort of just change the bold words there. You say whatever the Y variable or whatever the X variable was, and you can sort of just describe quickly what's going on. Um, and this is a really good little table. I'd put this in your bound reference summary book, whatever you like to call it, um, because it's a nice little way of describing what's going on. So I'd recommend getting a screenshot of this or writing it out yourself, um, sort of this sort of content. So let's have a quick look at this practice question again. I forgot to fix these up. Um, I did this in the in the chemistry one as well. This is VCAR 2016. When I was converting these slides over, because we've sort of changed our um, our formatting, these were white, and I forgot to convert them all to sort of to black, and then move them up a little bit so that they came up on the page. But I do apologise. That's VCAR 2016. Um, we've got question three, which is. The data in the table below shows a sample of actual temperatures and the apparent temperatures recorded at a weather station. Um, a scatter plot of the data is shown. So we've got actual temperature and we've got apparent temperature. You'd say apparent temperature is how you feel and then actual temperature is what the actual temperature is. Using the scatter plot, describe the association between apparent and actual temperature in strength in terms of um, strength, direction and form. So I have an R squared value of 0 0.97. So Best way to go about this, grab out your calculator. Let's hope this has battery. It does have battery. And go 0 0.97 and square root it. So if I, I'm actually gonna need to copy all of that, I'm gonna square root it and I get a value of 0 0.98. So my R value is 0 0.98, which is, just saying 0 0.98, which is really, really large. So then I come back to this page here. So I flip to this page in my dog. We're going to go, all right, it can be concluded that the Y variable should increase as the X variable increases. And I want to say that what I have here, so what I want to say is I have a linear, strong, positive relationship. And then I would just write out, just for completion's sake, this little paragraph here. And I'd say, it can be concluded that, so the Y variable, the apparent temperature should increase as the actual temperature increases. So I've given a little bit of context to both. That's really important. So you put that in these lines here. It may not be worth a mark, but for completion's sake, it looks a lot better on your page. So moving on. Um, does a high R value mean one thing caused another? Well, not necessarily. Um, and for example, like, you know, this is one of those things where it's like, there's a casual explanation. Now, what's really important, this has been effectively removed from the study design. And the only reason I left this slide in, so there was like, we had like 10 or 15 slides on this and I got rid of them all. The reason I left this slide in is because I've, noticed through sort of new content that's been created for this year that they still do just mention sort of, is this going to cause that? Is that going to cause that? And then sort of explain why this may not have caused that. They don't want you to use the intricate detail of like non-casual explanation, um, sort of those third party factors that we used to discuss in further. And you'll find will come up in your exams, practice exams as you do it, because it was in the old study design. All you need to know is that sometimes in our value, is misleading. Data is misleading. Data explains something that in common sense does not make sense. So sometimes you need to use for further, particularly, you need to use a bit of common sense. There'll be a question where they'll say, you know, you got these two factors and you got a really high R value, what's going on? You just need to say, it's likely that these are just coincidence and there's no real explanation for these two pieces of data being the same. Um, you never need to use, you're not going to have to use formal language anymore. In terms of this, you're not going to use certain definitions because it's been removed from the study design. But I just wanted to sort of clue you all in that in case you got a question like that at all, in case you're doing old exams and things came up and you were reading it and you went, oh, this is super detailed and I don't think I've ever done this. You probably haven't because it's new information. It's just been added. So please don't worry about it. If you're going through and you're struggling with this stuff, don't stress. Um, so. As you can see, it's just common sense, just general logic. So that's bivariate data, cool, moving on. 